when we say food safety and quality, what does that actually mean? The principle behind it all, without blending too much grammar, is uh, assurance that the food you want to consume is safe and nutritious for human consumption. The processing, the handling, the packaging, the storage, the distribution, all the various steps that ensure that you are able to keep all those things that can cause foodborne illness out of the way is what we mean by food safety. It's an assurance of the entire process in the food value chain. Okay, breaking it down, what are some uh, principles to observe when you handle food, particularly for public consumption? Number one. Because most of the time, people look at the bigger picture. Number one is personal hygiene. Huh? Personal hygiene is the sense that uh, the person, the food handlers, do they have something they call, have they conducted something they call food handlers test in the laboratory? And who analyze the report from the lab on those things? You know, they do fecal things, they do urine, they do a lot of tests before such people can handle food. And if it's in the food manufacturing sector, it's supposed to be a, an annual thing. It's not like somebody will do it this year, another year, that will be the end. It's supposed to be a continuous thing. You understand? Annually, people are supposed to. So the person that is handling the food, how healthy is the person? The person that is handling the food, does the person have a coach that can ultimately contaminate the food he's handling? What about the water that they are using to produce? Have they, have they conducted water analysis? Even if it's from the grassroots level too, the water people use to produce the food people who eat on the street, is it clean? Is it a portable one? And unfortunately, when, we, when I came to Lagos, you know, there is pipe on water all around the old places. Unfortunately, there's nothing like that. So the water they use, the personal hygiene of the person, and even those that are handling the food, do they use PPEs? What I mean by PPEs? Personal protective equipment. The at edge the hand glove, do they use something to cover their beds so that all these uh, herbs and will not go into the food they are producing? So there are a lot that comes into play when you are talking about the principles on some of those that guide food safety. As you're talking, I, I, my mind is just going through a lot of um, food vendors, what I see many food vendors do. If we were to go by these principles, it then means that we'll have maybe one person or two persons, but very few persons qualify to handle food. Because what we find, I don't know if Chooks has observed it too, is that someone is selling food and is still talking over the food. There is no food, there is no face mask at all. Nothing. The PPEs, you don't even see that. The only place you, you get to see some form of PPE is when you go to eateries. Chooks? Yes, when you go to um, public eateries, eateries that has a brand, not just eateries. Um, it is with a name and a, a signboard. Mm. Those, those, are, those, those are the kind of places where you see people that are covered because there's a supervisor on their neck making sure they, they do that. But if we go to some ya something or mama something, you know, you just overlook those such things. Then after 24 hours, you and the toilet become good friends. So is, is it a thing of people not uh, having the knowledge or not just even caring about it? Is that something that can be corrected? Yeah. Very possible. You see, let me take you back. During the Ebola crisis, I was consulting for a food establishment. You know, when you are talking about the trees, you know, we have the quick service, we have the table service, the military, you know. And we are consulting for an entry. But myself and my team, we are hungry, and we have to go to a nearby, you are you are talking about a food vendor from Elori. So when we got there, we wanted to eat because of our background. And I said, Madam, what about the water? You know, they would just bring a bowl that everybody has to. I said, Madam, but I need a detergent. He said, Mommy, people don't use it here. I said, Madam, there are some of us, when we come around, we'll use it. And when they are the following day, 
I was surprised. The woman has it on the table. I was happy. You know, when you are hitting and at least you feel a bit safe. Then the next thing I observe, I said, look at the, the tables. You see some of the remnants, they fall over, spill over, and you see ants moving around. I said, mommy, a lot of people want to hit. And when they see this, they won't want to eat. I said, what do you want to suggest? I said, you can buy all this uh, nylon. Just put it on the, tray, on the table, and it will look neat. I went there the next two days. I was surprised. The woman has it. When I went there, they told me, I found out that the same uh, one liter of that detergent, uh, that uh, also, is still there. I said, you are the only one that has been using it. I said, man, continue to put it there. There are some people, when they see it, they buy it. Come back to what you said. What I found out is, some of us that have that full safety knowledge, we are distance away from the classroom. They need it. When you want to correct people, you correct them with buff. People are ready to listen to this. I can tell you, look at the same process I was telling the woman, and she was providing this thing. And after going there another one month, I found out that the number of throughput, people that are coming to come and eat, the class, people that are putting on time, the number has increased. And she was happy. Say, I've been looking around for you all these days. So, you know, people are saying, Mama, where did you learn this? I we feel confident to say, Madam, you can buy this. You know, they need this knowledge. We are distant away from them. Most of the regulatory bodies, I know they are trying. Maybe we'll come back to it. The NAFDAQ of this world, the SUN, all the Ministry of Health, Safety Commission, Lagos State Consumer, all these bodies, they target the big brands, the well known names. Forgetting that if you are going to have an outbreak of football illness, most of us patronize the street foods. People doing suya, people doing a uh, pop off, they are not using this thing. How many people go to eat? I'm not saying the, coming here today, I have branched at home. You know, maybe because of our background, you go there, you talk to them, they are ready to listen. The regulation you put in place in all this manufacturing setup, complying with standard, how much? And because of now that, because of the laws, before, because of the post, before the, the fine you place on them, those ones are careful. But what this Mama Silifa you are talking about, Mama Jude, they need this knowledge. They we are far away from them. So, and if you go closer to them, you'll be surprised. Most of them, they, they do this thing out of ignorance. Some deliberately, they are hard to maximize profit, but some, they did it ignorantly. Couple of times, I have gone to my 12th market to go and educate these people on the use of some of those things. Using carbide. So still things. No. no. Carbide is for you to eat the wrapping of fruit, oh. the banana. Banana plantain. Banana plantain. And some fruits. You understand? You use carbide. Seriously? I'm telling you. You understand? Instead of people to right from the farm, you just pluck it, you invest it. We put it naturally, let that thing happen. But because people want to make money, fast, they use carbide to fasten it. You understand? Forgetting the dangers, the cancer, all those ones. You understand? But you have to go closer to them. You can't use fossil. I've been on a uh, uh, Lagos State uh, Safety Commission uh, team to go and talk to them. It's an advocacy. You have to go closer to them. What about those ones selling fruit at a, 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 a fruit market? They need this knowledge, but we are far away from them. That is just it. Thank you very much. I agree more with you that knowledge and information is power. Um, we, we, over, over time, we'll get to hear things from government, or orientation from government that will tell you, come, there's this particular set of things, don't buy. And when you research and find out more, you know that this particular set were either stored with a chemical that was supposed to stay there for maybe three, four, five years, and they just bring these things out and start selling in the market, out of fear. But now let's leave our local site and now go international. We, we get to process and export, we also import and a year or two ago, there was an outbreak of illness and infant mortality from a milk formula, an infant formula. How do we get to pinpoint and say, okay, government or private individuals, 
this is what you should buy avoid this or avoid that or if possible produce our own formulas here yeah i think a couple of years back at federal institute of industrial research Oshodi, Firo, they did this uh, formulation and at that time they were calling it winning foods but later they call it complementary food you know they conducted a lot of research before they came up with that soy, soy yogi. Yes. You understand? Because it went through an extensive scientific research and risk assessment before they came up with this thing. But you know Nigerians, maybe because of maybe I can call it the complex, the inferiority complex, they prefer to buy the imported brand, living our home. There are a lot of these local manufacturers that are using our own ingredients here to produce. The people who still want to buy. My brother, if you go to some markets on the island here, you'll be surprised what people are missing. And they are putting inside this container of the foreign brand and they will seal it up and they will bring it to the market. And you see the, the falsified NAVDAC number, all those other, the labels will not indicate anything. We can copy it. Those who are doing it, they are not spirit. They are not ghosts. They are human beings. They employ people and they have a shop. And they are doing it in the interiors. The regulatory bodies, I can't say this, they are not trying. But can they do more than they, what they are doing? It's only when all of us take it as that full safety is everybody's business. When you see it, when the, if somebody is doing something that is wrong, speak out. Report them. It's possible we can do our own formulation, the instant formulation here. These children, they wish something that is nutritious. Because, you know, when you look at the climate, what is applicable to those children outside this place is different from all that come from this temperature region. But because of that class, some people will still prefer to buy imported Cerelac, leaving the one they are doing here. Imported SMA, leaving the one we are doing here. Forgetting the fact that some people will go outside there, ask them to just put anything brand it, bring it here. And people, when you get, enter some of these shops, people will be asking which one is original, which one is fake. And some of those ones that are selling it, they will tell you this one is original. This, is, this one is not a doctor one. And people will go for it because they know that is what we want. So it's possible for us to stop it. But we can't leave this in the hand of government. We are the government. We are the government. So the regulatory bodies, even when you are looking at the entire NAVDA, the entire, the entire staff all over the country. Are they more than 2,000? SON, how many are they? So they can't see everything and they can't reach everywhere. If you end, I'm talking of only one market here. If you go to some other major market where people are selling something that people consume, you'll be afraid. You understand? And our, our background knowledge is if it's not safe, it's not food. Anything that is not safe is not food. Because any, anything that you put inside you that you can't see is injurious, it can cause anything. And you will not, not have opportunity of rectifying it. So the message to the entire world is if you see anything anybody is doing wrong, speak out. Don't keep quiet. Because today you might believe this one doesn't, it's not going to affect my family. But tomorrow we can see the circle. This, this thing will move around. Look at this uh, evaporated meat. There was a time when Lagos Safety Commission, um, Lagos Consumer Protection Agency, they were trying to, some of these people will buy, they will buy this meat, the powder meat. And you know from the manufacturer, this is the manufacturing date, this is expiry date. Best before. The people will go and buy. They go and pack in smaller, and people still want to have a taste. 
They don't care. There's no expiry date, there's nothing. They will buy it. You understand? Because they don't even see the bag, but they will repack it and they will start reselling it. And people will buy it. So at this stage, you know, they always want to target all these bigger brands. We have to cancel them. That let us go and meet these people, these retailers. Let's talk to them because they don't know the danger is what they are passing to the market. We we'll call them, they will tell you, this is this, this is the problem, this is the problem. And we have to ask them to call all those big manufacturers. Call them, let's call these people too. But if you don't want to do, you, want to, you don't want to go to this, they will do a lot of damage to your product. Because you don't know some other things that are going to what they are packing. And it is the big brand people will be mentioning. And the money you will spend to redeem your name, it will be more. So when you know, when you, if you know more, some of these food safety issues, you find it, in fact, you, you, know, you don't want to consume anything. But you have to at least food sphere. Most of these people are doing it. Very few of them are doing it deliberately. But the rest, they are doing it ignorantly. And some, because they have little knowledge on the dangers that they have on the human health. So how do we correct some of these things? You just talked about re relabeling, repackaging of some uh, food items and re um, reselling. For beverages, we find that very common now. Uh, it's even hard to tell these days which is the real and which is the fake because you have several imitations of popular beverage brands and they're everywhere. Sometimes the, the people who engage in this act are arrested. Uh, maybe sometimes NAFDAQ or even the police arrest people who in their homes are producing massively very popular beverages. And you just said that sometimes the people engage in things like this not intentionally, but uh, not having the knowledge of the harm, what you're doing can cost to people. So how do we address that? Yes, agreed that the agencies, the staff strength of the regulatory agencies may not be so much, but what can happen to reduce issues like this? Because they are threats to the lives of people. Once you consume something that is toxic to your system, some persons don't even need to tell the story. Yeah. One of those things, that we need to do it continuous awareness sensitization on the dangers consuming unwholesome adulterated foods maybe this is part of your own organization's csr what you are doing is part of it pass the message across to people food safety is not only lab dark business so Standardization is not only standard organization of Nigeria's responsibility, it's everybody's business. We all have to go to the market. Anytime you have opportunity, people see where these people are. Some of those, when my brother was talking about those ones that used my past to preserve beans, they are not doing it. They are doing it where people are passing. Some people will see, I won't buy here again, they will go. But some will take them off. Some want to fight them, but some will correct them. You understand? When you are moving and you see an aboki in court, you see water from a nearby well or gutter to clean the oranges, the vegetable is selling. Don't just pass. Correct that person. But all I always want to tell you is correct with love. If you talk to people, you talk to them in the way, the, the language they will understand. It will sink a lot. Most of this advocacy, some of us are doing, you know, you spend your money to print some leaflets, telling them these are the danger. This is the best way you can do some things. You print it in some of these languages, not only English. You can do pidgin. You do Yoruba, you do Hausa, or, or some of this. And if we still have Nigerian orientation agency, they can still continue to pass this message across. They should not limit it to the enlightened class. Because those who are selling the food we consume, the larger population of them, they are not educated. Though. And we that say we are educated, we are going to buy from them. Have you passed a place where you see the man selling uh, uh, raw meat? He's still pouring uh, blood 
on the meat to look fresh. And you just walk up us. You can see the contamination. You can see the danger. The man doesn't know the scientific thing behind it. He just knows I want this meat to look fresh. He just collect the blood, pour it on it, and it will look fresh. When you see some of these people bringing the meat and just splashing it on the, in the how much is this? 2,000. Can I pay 1,005? They didn't know the dangers in this thing. I've gone to Anabatio, where I saw the water they are using to wash the, the cow. They just finish it. They just slaughter. And nobody is saying anything. How many of us are taking our time to go to some of these Anabatio? Very early, around 5.30, before they start slaughtering this thing. The rule is, before they slaughter one round, the vet doctor is supposed to be there. But when you go there, what do you see? You understand? When you want to kill a ram, you are not supposed... You go to... Let me see. There is, there is a slaughter place in Ekorodu. You see where they are bringing the ram, beating the cow, and the person will be running after it. And you want to get the right uh, <laughs> nutritious thing from that meat. That is not... But they don't know. People that know are far away. How many of our health inspectors visit those places? How many of our people go to all those places where they are selling beans? And you know that sometimes when you pass where people are selling uh, uh, this uh, ice cream, the, pomo, the, the popular pomo, and you don't see flies on those things, and they are selling it in an open market. I expect people to be concerned. How are you doing it? They are selling this in the open. And there are no flies. The water they are dropping on those things. Do you know what constitutes it? At times you can ask questions out of curiosity. And some of them will be free to tell you that they are using formalin water to splash on this thing. They are using this thing so that flies will not be around this place. So if you know all these dangers, you don't want to buy. But I can tell you, continuous advocacy, sensitization thing, people will get the message. Which those ones that have the knowledge, they should not move too far away from them. Let's look at our local issues and now look at the business part of this um, quality issues and the safety issues. We have um, a lot of cash crops that we either process here or either try to do some processing or sell the raw materials. And one big issue with export is always that of quality. They get to grade the product, grade A or whatever grade they put on it. And when we get to the port or wherever it's moving, the partners or whoever is coming to buy, we say, no, this does not meet the quality we want to buy. And definitely they will either pay you low or they won't take it. A typical example, the cashew industry. They have that major issues. The starch industry, which we are supposed to produce more, we are not exporting more because of the quality we are producing here. How can we augment that and make sure we have the finest quality for exports? Thanks for that beautiful observation. But if you look at some of those that are producing this thing too, what is the level of our education? The education. I mean the growers, the farmers, you understand? As the first phase of that value chain. Some of them because of the fact that they see something that is even affecting their produce. They want to use some pesticides. The pesticide they are using, is it an approved one? Who certify it for them? Do they even go back to even adulterate it? And they will just spread it on all those produce. And uh, the remnants of those residues will cause a lot of harms. And when they now move it, hmm? The means of transportation too, at one stage or the other, and the value chain, the packaging, the storage. You know, we have a lot of challenges from our hand here. Who check it? Hmm? We have Nigerian Agricultural Quarantine Services. It's majorly at their responsibility for those produce that they want to export. But when you get to the port, there are duplication of now that say I want to check it, 
Can I tell you to say I want to check it? Some part of the SVM2 said they want to check it. At the end of the day, the delay, the bureaucracy to something that's supposed to leave the shores of this country, maybe within 48 hours, and you're spending three, four, five days. Are you sure you are still going to retain the quality? And the requirement, you know, we have a Codex Alimentarius Commission that set the standard. It's the same. All these have gone through scientific experiment and uh, risk assessment thing. Over here, this is the quantity of what we have in this. It's an established thing. But what is coming out from our home, and what is coming out from our home to Europe, and what is leaving Ghana to Europe, we find that it's not the same thing. Because of some of those things, some of those people that export. I'm not going to say sorry, because some, they employ some sharp practices. Believing that if they are able to beat, they call some beat all the regulatory bodies that are supervising it here, they'll be able to escape it. Forgetting that when they get to the border of the required country, they will still check the standard. And most of the time, we don't always meet up with the standard. So everything is still boiled down to when you are exporting, now, you know, that one is no longer in the hands of the um, lettered people. But the later the ones, the all the regulatory authorities that are involved in all this one. I know Nigerian Export Promotion Council, they always organize regular trainings for people that want to export. Customs should always do that. Even NAPDAC will always do that. A lot of seminars, people that don't even know anything about export business, they organize two, three day export workshop. People pay thousands. They will just find out all these things on paper when you are the state of exporting you now find a lot of is it the packaging the quality of the packaging materials you want to use to export your products most of the time we don't meet up so we still need the support of this export promotion council to come down to the basis people should visit the the farm where this thing is originating not only when they have already packaged everything you know we are very good in this part of the world. You can package your rubbish and people will want to buy it. It's only when you open it. There's somebody needs to show interest before this thing leaves the farm. What is leaving the farm? Because the residues of some of these things, the contaminants are too much. And this farmer doesn't know. The pesticides they are using, they don't even know the formulation. They don't even follow the usage. And you see them. We are the agriculture extension officers. That is part of so to be part of their role. So they are not there. There are a lot of people in that value chain, right from the farm, before you get to that level. But where are they? In the past, you see them, you see the agri extension of the educating these farmers. These and these are what you are supposed to do. You see people moving from, from the town to meet these people, talk to them, edu educate them. But this is not going the way we should be. They will not give up continue to advocate for best practices. We have good agricultural practices that are supposed to be extended to them regularly. In the manufacturing sector, when you are talking of the big brand, they have good laboratory practices, they have good manufacturing practices. But when it comes to all these farm produce, they have good agricultural produce. Practices that people are supposed to follow, that people, they just want to cut it. You know, this cut, cut, they want to just evade some things. Not until we change our mindset, we we'll continue to experience some of these things that have been rejected from entering the shores of those countries. Because those were the place most premium and standard, and they are not going to bend it. And SON2, they have standard. But at the point of implementation, a lot of things go wrong. I was in one of a working group of SON. They are trying to do some standard, half a draft Nigerian industrial standard for instant dairy creamer. Look, they have a lot of things. They are the point of implementation is the issue we are having in this country. They will get it right one day.
So how do we get it right? Quickly, let's talk, let's talk about two things, sustainable farming and uh, uh, even food that have already been produced. Because for the, the already produced food, you can say, oh, you need not that number to be sure if it's missed the standard. But for the produce themselves, for instance, yeah, do you stamp NAFDAQ number on yeah? So how do you know that this one has, uh, the, 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 was properly grown? We're beginning to have uh, GMO products. We're beginning to have um, different kinds of produce that are not the way they used to be. Even for the, 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 the animal produ products, like poultry, for instance, you find chicken these days not tasting as you would have you 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 find in chicken the one we used to know you find that uh, even for the uh, fruits they're not tasting as they used to taste but for those who support genetically modified products they'll tell you that it's just to enhance the output and to make them look better how do we safely do these things also retaining the quality of the produce <laughs> It's a complex, it's a compl it's a complex uh, situation. Safely, you can tell you some, some GMO foods are safe for consumption. But when you look at some of, you mentioned some, you mentioned some things about the, the chickens you're talking about. What about the feed? What goes into the feed now? Then, you have some organization that Specifically for feeds, you have life, livestock feeds. Those ones they will produce the premix. They have all the vitamins, all the necessary with that. That you can now buy. You can now go back to your farm. You can use. You can get a maize, depending on the, the way you want to formulate it. They're gone and it is. We don't have all those ones again. And because of high cost of producing some of these things, people are now going back home, formulating whatever they can think about, just to push anything to the market. Ultimately, it's going to affect the quality of what we are going to get. Look at even the catfish. I even come to that one. Even look at the catfish. We have some feeds meant for those things. Then when people started using sawdust to even feed some of these things, so what do we want to get at the end of the day? So a lot of things is wrong. Me, I don't belong to that class that said government is not doing this, government is not doing this. If you are expecting them to do it, I don't know, maybe it Jesus Christ come, until we take it upon ourselves and change our mindset. People are cutting corners. When it comes to agri produce, like we are talking about yam, you are not going to get is the steps. Good agricultural practice. Agri extension waters are supposed to go inside the farm to go and talk to them. This is the best way. And every day, a lot of varieties of some of these things are coming up. Is it about the rice? We have a lot of varieties, some that you can grow today and get this. That people have experimented, they've done a lot of research. We have a lot of food that are doing that. But when you now look at some of these varieties that can give you the ultimate nutritious thing you are looking about, the price in the market, those farmers cannot use it. So do you rather go back to their old way of doing things and we'll continue to have? It's only the, the I would say, the, those ones that have, they have with that, the financial muscle that can do it. But they can't do it yet. There is no land in Lagos. If they want to do it, they rather go outside this place. But those people that are going to do it, what is their knowledge? What is the knowledge they have concerning this thing? Knowledge is key. Knowledge sharing is one of those things that can solve some of those things that we are observing now. 